So last year I tried meditating every single day, 365 days in a row. It was tough. It was also a little bit trippy at times, but let me start from the beginning. Every year I love to set a 365 goal, one habit, a small daily habit that I want to do every day for a year, usually in hopes to be able to solidify it in a way that I can really continue it on. So usually this have been pretty small habits like drinking enough water every day or flossing every day. But last year I decided to really step it up a notch and attempt <laughs> daily meditation. Now, this was huge for me because although I had been meditating for a long time and I was trained to meditate by somebody who is like a legit meditator, that's all they do, I, I resisted it regardless of my own work, the work that I do as a coach, working with mindset, working with belief breakthrough, I was still struggling to meditate on a consistent basis. I had a lot of resistance when I just sat down to do the deed. It was overwhelming, it felt really serious, and it felt like I was gonna have to let go of a part of myself in order to attain this ideal of spirituality or personal growth. And I really knew that in order for me to continue to up-level, I was at that point where I had to take on meditation. I had to tackle it head on. So this was probably the hardest 365 goal I've ever set, but I think it was really worth it. Now, because I knew I had a lot of hesitation or resistance going into this, I also wanted to set myself up for success. So I set some really basic rules. My main rule was that I had to meditate every single day for 10 minutes minimum. If I decided to meditate longer, awesome, but the next day I still had to do a minimum of 10 minutes. Outside of that, I didn't set any other rules. I didn't care what kind of meditation I did, how I was doing it, when I was doing it, only that I was doing it every single day. So January was just about focusing on establishing the routine, figuring out the best time to meditate, the best method, and really when I say best, what I was looking for was simple but appealing, something that was going to be easy and that I might want to do so that I could hopefully overcome some of that resistance. So to do all of this, I was figuring out where I was gonna meditate, how I was gonna help myself remember, so I had reminders on my to-do list, I had reminders on my phone, I had a daily tracking app. I used Habit Bowl to help me track and just keep up with my routines. I didn't care if the meditation was productive. I didn't care about anything other than just focusing on the routine, making sure that I was showing up, sitting down and doing the thing, regardless of how it turned out. My only focus was let's get the routine, the time, the place, the method figured out in this first month. So some things that helped me, like I said, was having those reminders, using the Habit Bull app, but also just the fact that I was trying to do this every day instead of you know three times out of the week really helped me to create a routine or figure out where in my routines I could squeeze this in. And in the beginning, the only time and place that I could do this, that I realized that I needed to do this was A, in the morning, because if I didn't do it first thing, I wasn't remembering until I was laying in bed that night. And B, I was actually doing this in my attic. Now this was in our last house and it was a finished attic, but it was still freezing cold. I would actually put a blanket over my head so that I could try to maintain some warmth and I would just sit down and meditate for 10 or plus minutes in the freezing cold in January in my attic underneath a blanket, usually in my pajamas. It was not sexy. It was not appealing, but it helped me to get the job done. It helped me start creating that routine, which was one of the biggest pieces that I knew I was gonna have to overcome. I also started with a Abraham Hicks video because it had some music with it that helped me to pace my breathing. It was really positive and encouraging, which made the whole process a little bit more appealing. But I actually found that pulling that up on YouTube every day was super distracting because then I was getting sucked into YouTube after my meditation. So what I ended up doing, I incorporated um, meditation beads into that meditation, the Abraham Hicks meditation 
meditation. And that got me pacing my breath, pacing myself with the music and learning how to do that without the music. I could then pace myself just with my breath and using the beats as I went along. February through May was pretty uneventful. It was just me trying to sit down every morning and remember to continue to meditate. I was still using my beads. It was about an 18 minute meditation going through that round of beads. And yeah, there wasn't much to say. It wasn't that sexy. It wasn't that interesting. None of the really trippy stuff had happened yet. And it was really just still about the habit, the routine. I would go through my morning routine and when my husband left for the gym, that's when I would sit down and meditate every single day without fail. Even as we were moving house, we were packing up, we were driving across the country, we were moving in with family, I was still just focusing on how can I get this done first in my day before the craziness of the day started. Once the day started, the odds of me remembering before I was laying in bed at night were really, really small. And there were a few times where the best that I could do, I was so tired at the end of the day and then I'd remember, oh my gosh, I didn't meditate today. And so I would just lay there and meditate myself to sleep, which I will admit means that I don't know that I actually got 10 minutes. I'm just guesstimating that I got 10 minutes, which might be considered cheating, but I'm not going to consider it cheating because 365 days of meditation is hard. And I learned throughout this process to give myself some grace. Let's be real. June 1st, the first day that I forgot to meditate. We had gotten up super early in the morning, earlier than we normally get up on a Saturday. We were driving a little bit of a distance to get to my husband's powerlifting competition. We were there all day long. When we got back, I was so exhausted and I didn't even realize that I didn't meditate that morning. I woke up the next day so upset. But here was the thing that I really took away from it. Speaking of giving yourself grace, my old habit would have been so upset. I would have felt like the whole thing was ruined June 1st and you know I couldn't go past that. I have to start over from day one. And instead something shifted in my mind that said, you know what, let's just go for 364 out of 365. So instead of beating myself up, I chose to just forgive myself and continue moving forward, which to be honest, I mean, that's a huge deal for me. <laughs> I am a little bit of a perfectionist. I don't like to say that I'm a perfectionist. I like to say that I have very high standards. And although I didn't set a lot of high standards for this challenge, the standard that I did set to do it every single day, it's a big deal for me, not because I wanna get it perfect, but because my natural tendency is not self-discipline. I'm a very self-indulgent person and it's very easy for me to drop habits, even habits I've been doing for six months. And so for me to be able to just give myself that grace was a huge step and I was actually, it felt like the right thing to do. It was difficult for me to do and therefore I knew it was the right thing to do. So I woke up June 2nd. This was when we were actually starting to pack and move within, I think it was about 10 days later. So I woke up that next day and was just like, you know what? 364, let's do it. So I no longer needed it to be perfect. I just needed to keep doing it. And I did. I did it while we were driving a U-Haul across the country. I did it while we were moving in with family, which let me tell you was a huge transition and took a lot. And wow, meditation became really, really, really appealing around that point. It was also around this time that I started finding a lot of the 30-day meditation challenges on YouTube. And I started realizing that if this had been a 30-day challenge, I would have gotten nothing out of it because all of the good stuff that happened started happening around six months in. I even wrote in my journal on July 22nd, and I want to read to you what I wrote in terms of the benefits that I was seeing with meditation up to this point. I've been meditating for over half a year. I notice that I care less about my thoughts. I'm quieter. I don't feel the need to answer, to argue, to get my point across. Really kind of a big deal, especially in arguments with my husband. I don't feel the need to mull thoughts over and over. I now get exhausted by my own worrying. I'm able to just get quieter, easier. I'm able to just let it go. 
My thoughts and my emotions are just less attractive. At first, it was just about the self-discipline, training myself to consistently do it. Just remembering was difficult. And then one day, it wasn't. It was necessary, like going to the bathroom or drinking or eating. There might be times where I forgot first thing in the morning, but just like skipping a meal, I would start to notice and I would crave it. I would need it. I crave the quietness, no distractions, no noise, no notifications, just calm. And that's really where I was starting to see the benefits. This was in probably late June, early July. We were living in a house with my parents and my grown son. So it's a small house and five adults. It was a lot. And I was getting up at 4.30 every morning easily because I was craving that ability to sit down, quiet my mind, quiet my emotions, sit in a quiet atmosphere and just breathe and just listen and just experience. And that's really, I think, where the meditation began to get really addictive. August was when things got a little crazy. We were buying a house and then we came in and we did some remodeling. And also at the same time, I'm trying to work and I'm trying to manage other things. And we were just kind of a little batty, like we were kind of going nuts. But there's this quote and it's been attributed to like a million people. So I don't know who actually said it, but it goes, everyone should meditate for at least 10 minutes a day, unless you're really busy. And then you should meditate for an hour. And I really noticed that it was true. In August, we were so busy. We had so many things going on. And I was meditating not less, but more. Sometimes I was meditating an hour up to two hours a day. And in fact, anytime I felt worse um, throughout that month, I got sick once, I actually wanted to meditate more. That's when I was meditating two plus hours a day. That's all I wanted to do was just sit quietly and just absorb it, soak it in. The world around me was going nuts and this became kind of my safe haven. This was also around the time that I had my first kind of trippy experience. I was meditating and I had this sense of expansion and I have no idea how to ex describe that, explain that to anybody other than the fact that everything seemed to slowly fade away, nothing was around me. I felt bigger, expanded. I, I really don't know how to describe it, but I think that's part of why I was meditating more and more because it was such a good feeling and I just wanted to capture it more often. I wasn't feeling it every time I meditated though. I think in August, I maybe felt it like once or twice. The other times I still felt calm. I still felt good, but that feeling, that brushing up against something kind of mystical, magical, it kept me going. It kept me wanting to meditate more because I wanted to find it again. Like, what was that? Let me figure out, like, how do I get there again? And that was kind of not a good idea, but I'll go into that a little bit more in a second. August 24th was the second day I missed meditation. This was also our anniversary. I was super, super sick. I had a terrible UTI with a fever. It was so bad. I also had a huge chronic illness flare up. I was laid out in bed, the sickest I've been in a really long time. And I just straight up forgot. I didn't remember it when I woke up in the morning. I didn't remember it when I went to bed at night. And usually those are the two times when I would think about meditation the most. When am I gonna do my meditation? Have I done my meditation? And that day, I was so feverish. I think that that just took me out of everything. It didn't even cross my mind until the next day I woke up feeling better and I was like, dang it, I did it again. So again, I was frustrated, but I was like, you know what? Two, it would not two, 363 out of 365. Just keep at it, keep going, you know, just keep showing up. And I also was like, I've also had some days this month where I've meditated for like two hours a day. So I think we can call it even if I miss 10 minutes today. So September rolled around. We still had a lot of stress, but I was still loving my meditation. And because I had that experience of kind of brushing up against something, I really started to experiment with different kinds of meditations. And I wish that I hadn't done that because now, instead of it being a thing that I was 
just committing to do for myself without focusing on the end goal, it now became a thing that I had to attain. And I was judging it and I was looking at it in terms of what I was getting from it, which was taking me away from the actual experience of it. On one hand, it was good because I was letting go of this idea that I had to have this purest meditation. I had to be in total silence with nothing but my beads, focusing on my breath. And instead I was you know, experimenting with different guided meditations and things like that. I wrote in my journal, this is September 26th, I wrote that the gal at the chiropractor said she can't meditate and that it even made her angry. She wasn't talking to me, but in a world of instant gratification, we seem to have forgotten that good things take time and that we shouldn't be instantly good at things. There's no dopamine hit with meditation. It's addictive in a different, slower kind of way. It's interesting how I can now immediately calm my mind, like habit has finally kicked in. Just by closing my eyes and breathing slowly, I can immediately calm my mind. So I do see the benefits, even if meditation is still challenging me. The music helps, but it can also put me to sleep. <laughs> I also wrote meditation definitely feels easier when I'm just slightly sleepy. Not enough to fall asleep, but enough that my brain isn't awake fully either. Today's was really good, much quieter mind. The thoughts that did come up were slower, and during one moment I felt transported or slightly outside of my own eyes, viewing a room or through a window very peacefully. I don't actually remember this, but it's probably something along the lines of that feeling of expansion of like what I do remember. I don't remember this date in particular, but what I do remember was that feeling that things were just kind of softening and losing shape or form. Like usually when I would meditate, my brain would go and, and you know, I'd be visualizing things and thinking about my day, but what would happen was, was slowly the things that I'm picturing it's almost like they kind of melt. They turn into blobs and, you know, my, my brain just starts to slow down and then I'm kind of just slowly relaxing into the meditation more and the things around me I'm not quite as aware of. This was also the month that a really trippy thing happened. And this isn't the first time it's happened. Years ago, um, shortly after I had been Reiki certified, I had been meditating and I had left my hands on my legs and I was wearing shorts, so it was skin on skin, but this was the first time that even skin on skin, this had happened where after my meditation, I picked my hands up and I had a full red handprint, but it was like an outline. And that hadn't happened for years since, but in September, it happened twice. Once when my hands were on my knees, and I think it was just my fingertips, and I'll try to share a picture in this video, but it's really hard to see. But it was an outline of my fingertips, which is kind of strange because it wasn't actually where my fingers were setting, but just an outline of where they were setting. Another time I was laying down to meditate and I had my hands over my stomach like this, and my shirt, the seam of my shirt was underneath both hands, but underneath one hand, not the other, you can actually see the handprint and you can see where it left a shirt print. Both hands were the same weight on my stomach and they were both basically in the same place, but for whatever reason, one hand left this handprint and left an imprint of the shirt that was underneath it. Whereas underneath the other hand, there was no shirt wrinkles, nothing. It was only a 15 minute meditation. It's not like I had, you know, fallen asleep on it to leave an imprint like that clothing wise. And then hand wise, I don't know, you know, of all the meditations that I did last year, that only happened those two times, but it was really trippy to see. When you pull your hand up and you see a handprint like that, it feels a little bit like a ghost has been touching you. I have no idea what it was, and maybe some of you do know what that is. I had someone tell me once that maybe it was some sort of energy marker. I, I have no idea what that even means, but it was really cool. Again, this is where I was starting to see the benefits and sh I was shifting in my brain from meditating for the sake of just showing up, just meditating, the self-discipline and, and being open to the experiences to now attaching these really cool, somewhat trippy experiences to it and 
in doing so, I think I was focusing slowly, starting to focus on the things that were taking me away from the joy of the meditation. I was now focusing on an outcome versus the process itself. And I didn't realize it at the time, but that was really the beginning of the end for me. In October, I wrote this about the meditation. It seems to take most of the meditation to get to this point, but there's an experience of long pauses between thoughts and of distant nondescript thoughts, almost as though I'm falling asleep, but that I'm not engaged in. So I'm not, I'm still awake, I'm still conscious, but I'm just, it's like these thoughts are just light and fuzzy in the background, like they're really soft background noise, and I'm just not engaging with them and I can fall into that pause between my thoughts easier. One thing I really noticed though was that as soon as I realized that was happening, it snapped me back into awareness. I was out of that pause, that stillness or calmness, and I was immediately into my brain again thinking about like, oh, that was that experience. So I was wanting to experience it with my full awareness, but by bringing my full awareness to it, it's almost like it it shook me out of the experience altogether. Now, I said that September was kind of the beginning of the end. Because I had kind of shifted to this outcome-based process where I was really focused on what I was getting out of it, the end of September, beginning of October, I started to actually study the Yoga Sutras because I wanted to see was my meditation progressing accordingly? What should I be experiencing? What can I do to get me to the next step? So instead of just being present in the process, I was analyzing the process. And I didn't, again, I didn't realize this at the time, but closer to probably the beginning of November is when I was really aware of it. But I just started to lose motivation. I started to lose the desire. I didn't want to show up to meditation the same way that I wanted to two months before when I was craving it and just loving it and couldn't get enough of it. Now it was like, it became a chore. It became a thing I needed to do or not so much needed to do, but had to do. I felt like I should do it and I should do it in a certain way. And if I wasn't doing it in a certain way, I wasn't going to see the benefits of it. And if I wasn't seeing the benefits of it, there wasn't any point to it. And so it just shifted the entire experience of meditation. Come November, what I was very conscious of was that I was becoming aware of how to get myself to that state a little bit quicker. What I started to notice is at the beginning of my meditation, my awareness would be outside of me, right? I was aware of the noise in the room or the light of the room or if somebody were, you know, pulling out of their garage outside. And then what I would notice is that my next step, my awareness would be right here. It would be right on my forehead. Now, this is your prefrontal cortex. So I'm kind of assuming that this was just my thinking part of the brain, and I was focusing on my thoughts. Now, instead of what's around me, it's going on what's inside of me. Then I would notice after that that my thoughts would pull back a little bit. And this sounds really weird, but my awareness was now on the back of my eyelids. So it was like my thoughts just pulled back a little bit more from the prefrontal cortex to like just behind it. And the more I could focus on my eyelids, which was a little bit like crossing your eyes with your eyes closed, I was kind of focusing like right here and that would calm my brain down a little bit faster. And I couldn't ever make myself take the next step but the next step would come if I could stay there long enough. When I stayed there long enough, I would notice that my awareness would recede backwards again. That's the only way I can describe it. And it's not that it was in my mind now. It's not that I was focusing on anything. It's that I was focusing on nothing. So it was like my awareness was just coming inward, 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 inward. And then it was like it was going back into something else. Like, I really don't know how to explain it, but that's where I would feel that shapelessness, that formless, that feeling of expansion when everything would fade away and fall away. So now I was to the point where I knew how to get myself there quicker. I knew that if I could pull myself in at least to the back of my eyeballs or not to the front of my eyeballs, the back of my eyelids, then if I could just focus on my breath and focus on keeping my awareness on the back of my eyelids, then I would slowly start to move back. And I'm not saying this to say that this is what works for everybody. I have no idea. This was just something that I noticed through 
11 freaking months of meditation. It took me that long to realize that that was what was finally bringing me to that point, that feeling, that sensation that I had first felt in August, that I had kind of started to see a little bit of in July when I was kind of really noticing my desire for more calmness is because I was getting closer and closer to that feeling in my meditation. And again, I don't, I don't know what this is. I don't have the terminology for this. I'm not an expert in this whatsoever. That's why I was trying to learn the yoga sutras or, or study the yoga sutras to try to put some words to all of this. But ultimately I think we're trying to put words to something that we can't put words to. And we're trying to experience something that you can't experience in a 30 day challenge. And I'm super glad that I did, did it as a 365 challenge because what I experienced towards the end was totally different than what I experienced in the beginning. In the beginning, it was all about just showing up, sitting down and trying to bring myself back to my breath again and again and again and again. Now, like in starting in November, especially, I was really noticing that it was just a different experience. There was so much more depth to it. There was so much more um, understanding of it. It felt more familiar. It felt more comfortable. It didn't make me antsy to try to shut my mind down. To this day, I mean, I can still just quiet my mind, close my eyes, take a few deep breaths, and immediately bring myself here and calm myself, whatever the situation is. And that's a skill that I wouldn't have gotten in the first couple of months. But that doesn't mean that it stayed easy. By mid-November, I had a huge flare-up in my health, and then it was followed by another huge flare-up and another huge flare-up and another huge flare-up. I missed a few days in November, and after that, it really started to fall apart quickly, even though I had 11 months, 11 and a half months of this habit, I was surprised how quickly it crumbled. The last week of November into the first two weeks of December, I was meditating about 60% of the time. By mid-December, I was at zero and I didn't even care. I didn't want to meditate. I had no desire to meditate whatsoever. I was dealing with so many health issues. I had so much stress going on and I was so frustrated over just health things that to sit down to meditate it felt like too much energy. Even though I hadn't had an experience of meditating being a lot of energy probably since the beginning of the year, I just didn't want to. The only thing my body wanted was sleep and even meditation felt like too much. All of that resistance that I'd had a year before of around wanting to meditate, it was back in full force and I just I just quit. I just quit meditating. So by December 31st, I had meditated a total of 333 days out of 365. And there's a part of me that's pretty bummed about that. Like my overachiever really wanted to nail that one. There's another part of me that's proud of myself that I allowed myself to stop when I needed to stop because that's difficult for me sometimes. And then there's this part of me that's torn, that really doesn't know if it was the right thing to do, that really doesn't know if I gave up too soon, or if maybe I had continued to just show up without the expectation, dropping the outcomes, and getting back to the basics of just being present with my body in that meditation, if maybe I would have even, see here I go again, gotten somewhere else, right? I don't know. I really don't know if I did the right thing. I just know that that's what I did and I have to make peace with it. I did not nail my 365 challenge last year. And ultimately, I'm okay with that because the lessons and the experience that I got from it are still with me. And if you're wondering, am I going into this year still meditating every day? The answer is no. What I actually decided to do instead was meditate Monday through Friday. Of last year, the days that were the hardest for me to maintain my meditation were, were twofold. Number one, it was if I was really, really sick. And dealing with chronic illnesses, that is something that I have to face this year. 
Number two was if it were a Saturday or a Sunday. My routines during the week are so different than my routines on the weekend, partially because of my chronic illness. I'm very diligent about how I use my time on the week, during the week, but on the weekend, I kind of just let it all go and allow myself to rest. And that means sleeping in, that means having no schedule. And so this year I decided I'm going to maintain my meditation routine Monday through Friday, minimum of 10 minutes, going back to the basics. I don't care about the outcome. I don't care about the experience. I just care about showing up. And on Saturday and Sunday, if I want to meditate, awesome. But I'm not going to expect myself to. I'm just going to go back to grace. I'm going to go back to trusting the process, showing up for the process, and seeing what comes of it, and not worrying about trying to make it something, trying to hit 365, trying to meditate every day, trying to hit some level of spiritual attainment. I just want to show up for me, for my mental health, for my spiritual health, for my physical health even, just showing up consistently and listening to what my body needs and honoring that, even if my body does not want meditation at that that moment. I'm still going to meditate Monday through Friday, even if I have a flare up. It may be a pretty crappy meditation. I may not even make it a full 10 minutes. I'm really okay with that now. I want to continue meditating though, and I want to continue it for me. And here's the thing that I will say also. Last, about September, I realized that I wanted to do this video and I wanted to share my experience with meditation. And it became a huge distraction during my meditation because all of a sudden I was narrating what was happening and what I was doing. And, and it took it away from me. And so I'm glad to do this video because I know for myself, if I'd seen a video like this with all of the explanations and what worked and what didn't work, that would have helped me so much. And my hope is that it will help someone else as well. But also meditation is incredibly intimate. It's incredibly personal. It's incredibly unique to the person doing it. And I really struggled for a while whether or not I wanted to share this. I have never shared meditation in, in my life. I've never put pictures of it on Instagram. I've never wanted to, you know, wave it around like it was something to brag about. I see it as a very intimate personal practice. I chose to do this video in hopes that it would encourage other people, but I'm really excited to get back to an intimate personal practice. So you may not see or hear much from me about meditation in the future. Maybe you will, but it's really about me and my experience and seeing what comes of it. Oh, and by the way, if you are new here, and especially if you've watched to this point, thank you. My name is Tara Wagner. I'm a belief breakthrough coach. And usually I'm on this channel talking about mindset, productivity, all the things we need in order to crush our goals without crushing our soul. And if that sounds like something that might support you, I would love for you to subscribe. I would definitely love for you to hit the like button, leave me a comment. Those things help me out so much in the algorithm. But most importantly, let me know where you're at with meditation. I would love to hear from you. I would love to know what your thoughts are, what you've done, what's worked for you, what's not working for you. I'd love to just continue this conversation in the comment section. Thank you again for watching all of this and I will see you in the next one.